I'm going to be looking at Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. It says in Nehemiah 4, verse 1, But it came to pass that when Samballot heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth, and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews? What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth, and conspired all them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So, this is going to be about overcoming your enemies, overcoming the things that's getting in your way, and you see, you can't build anything worth building without running into adversaries. Nehemiah and the people, they're just trying to build the wall. And here comes adversaries. And 1 John 3.13 says, Marvel not if the world hates you. Don't be surprised if somebody sees you doing something and they hate you for it. Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you, John 15, 18. Paul said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, 2 Timothy 3, 12. You're going to run into many Alexander the Coppersmiths. You're going to run into Diotrephes. You're going to run into Sanballat and Tobias. And Nehemiah continues to let the Lord use him to do the impossible through him. And with this comes adversaries. And here are some ways to overcome the foe, overcome the enemies, overcome obstacles. The first one is just realizing mockers come and go. Sanballat and Tobiah are wroth over the building of the wall. And they begin to mock the Jews. And a key phrase, though, is that it came to pass because mockers come and go. Notice there in verse 1, it says, but it came to pass. That's a great phrase because it's not going to last forever. It's going to come to pass. Mockers are going to come and go. And they're going to be mad because the saints are working. But you need to realize that mockers come and go. They're going to be mad because you're working, but it's going to come to pass. They, it says they are wroth. They were very wroth with them. They were mad about it. They took great indignation, it says. Uh, Paul would probably call them busybodies. Over in 2 Thessalonians 3.11, Paul says, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. See, if Sinbalat and Tobiah were busy doing their own stuff, they wouldn't have time to worry about what I'm doing. You know, there's a lot of people where I work with, they're so worried about what everybody else is doing that they can't do their own thing. There are times when people have said, they've looked at my car, my old car that I used to have, and I had gospel car magnets on it and stuff like that, and they they said, those, those gospel magnets are silly. I've, I've had people say that my gospel tracks were stupid, I've heard I have had people say that I'm obsessed with all this Bible stuff. I've had more than one person say that that I'm obsessed with all this Bible stuff. And that's just mockery simply because people are jealous 
and they're angry and people get under conviction because you're doing something and they aren't doing anything. They get under conviction because they see you doing something that they know deep down maybe they should do or maybe think they should at least be doing something and they're not doing anything. So they're mad because you're doing something. Sam Ballant and Tobiah are mad because they're doing something, mad because they see somebody else working towards something. And then next thing is they're making light of the saints. They make light. Over in Nehemiah 4, verses 2 and 3, you see Sam Ballant, and he spake before his brethren and before the army of Samaria, and said, what do these feeble Jews? He calls them feeble. He says, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? He's making light of them. Sanballat refers to them as feeble Jews. What a thing to say. Basically saying that they lack the physical strength to even do such a task. And Tobiah, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah, both mock, get on in on the mockery here, and Tobiah says, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So, a little fox, he says, is, could come up and knock down their, the wall over. So, a fox is actually what Tobiah is. You know, over there in Song of Solomon 2.15, it talks about little foxes that spoil the vines. That's all Tobiah is. He's, he's the one that's just a little fox. You know, a lot of times people say something about you, but it's really them. It's really about them. You know, just like when the Pharisees tried to use Herod to scare the Lord Jesus, the Lord said, go and tell that fox. You see, when you're on the Lord's side, the enemy is actually light work when you lean on the Lord. They're nothing but just little foxes. But, you could, but the little foxes can spoil the vines if you let them. You know, Jesus said the foxes have holes in Luke 9, 58. You see, some of these foxes look for holes. Jesus said the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. But the foxes, they look for holes. They'll look for holes in your teachings. They'll look for holes in your goals. They'll look... For holes in your service for the Lord. They'll look for dirt on you. They'll try to dig up dirt on you. This way they can begin to make light of you personally. Maybe even your physical appearance. Like I, that even has anything to do with anything. You know I've heard somebody teach against something. They'll teach against a doctrine somebody else is teaching. And instead of teaching why the doctrine's wrong. They're teaching. Or they're just making a mockery of the person. And making fun of the other person's physical appearance. I'm thinking, are you in elementary school, possibly high school, or are you a Bible believer that cares about the Lord Jesus Christ in the Scriptures? When you start making fun of people's physical appearance, calling them names, it's really showing that you are losing the argument. In the new IFB documentary against dispensationalism that came out years back, they spent a good portion of time making light of other teachers, maybe looking into the teacher's personal life, and even the appearance of dispensational teachers they don't like. They, they spent a good few minutes talking about Ruckman's children and his wives and things like that and got into Robert Breaker's appearance, his weight. I mean... You can't just, that doesn't do anything to teach against the doctrine. Because you could go and find teachers who teach what they're teaching and they've got problems with their children. They, maybe they got problems with their weight. Maybe they got problems with their physical appearance. And you know, what would, the, what would they say about the Apostle Paul? Because over there in 2 Corinthians 10.10, 10, it said his bodily presence was weak. You know, physical appearance physical strength, things like that. That's just looking and focusing on the flesh. But they'll make light of, people are going to make light of you 
because they're jealous. But how you look doesn't even matter. Because you take away their shampoo, their conditioner, their nice clothes. And if it's a woman, take away their makeup. A lot of times, they're going to look worse than you do. But they're going to make a lot of you. When someone uh, says something about your weakness, or maybe even calls you feeble like San Violet and Tobiah like to do, remind them, just remind them that a saint never does anything in his own strength anyway. Not in salvation. You know, in Romans 5, 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. I, my strength didn't play a part in my salvation. My, my own strength doesn't play a, really play a part in spiritual warfare. It says in Ephesians six ten, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I can't do it on my own. I have to rely on the Lord. You can't rely on the Lord in your, uh, your own strength and your salvation. You have to rely on the Lord. You can't rely on yourself in temptations and spiritual warfare. you got to rely on the Lord. And then over in uh, 2 Corinthians 2.10, it says, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. You see, when it comes to forgiving somebody, you're relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. And over in 2 Corinthians 10.10, 10, 2 Corinthians 10.10 10 says, For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. You see, Paul wasn't relying on himself, going in his own strength. His bodily presence was weak. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 10. It says, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. You know, I think Paul was being somewhat uh, sarcastic there. But he wasn't going around saying he was this big, strong guy. And he, he's not strong in himself at all. It's the, he was having to be sarcastic with him. He was saying to the Corinthians, you know, we're weak, but you're strong. You see, it's carnal people that think they're doing this stuff in their own strength anyway. See, Corinthians was the carnal church, and they thought they were strong in themselves. And 2 Corinthians 12, 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. You see, Paul says when he's weak, then he's strong. How about that? Sanballat and Tobiah. When someone says something about your weakness, remind them you're not doing this in your own strength anyway. When someone says something about your appearance, tell them it's not about how you look, it's about the Lord. And you're going to get a body like His, and then you are going to look good. The truth, the truth is, people get intimidated by you. Just as Saul was intimidated by David, David and was afraid of him, and when he saw that the Lord was with David, it said he was afraid of him. You know, no wonder Sanballat went and spake to the army of Samaria back there in verse 2. He's going to speak to an army. Sounds like he's a little scared. He says in verse 2, Will they fortify themselves? Well, they're already fortified by the Lord. Psalm 18 and verse 2. In Psalm 18 and verse 2, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the Lord of my salvation and my high tower. They're already fortified. He says, will they sacrifice? Yes. Will they make an end in a, end in a day? Well, they, they will have confidence that the Lord could finish it in a day, and then they're going to work until it's done. Just as the saint hopes that the Lord will come today, but they'll work till he comes. You know, he says in Luke 19, 13, Occupy till I come. 
he uh, he also asked them, or he asked, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish in verse 2? You know, he kind of insults their intelligence there. Of course, they'll, they'll get rid of the rubbish before they begin to build. Just like when you start walking with the Lord, you remove the rubbish from your life so that you can properly build on the perfect foundation. Jesus Christ, your perfect foundation. You, you uh, start in your Christian walk for the Lord, remove the rubbish out of your life. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 12, and you can be able to build on that perfect foundation. So, Overcoming the enemy, part of it is realizing that these mockers are going to come and go. And when you realize that, you don't get overwhelmed by them. The next thing is, you meet with God in prayer. You want to overcome the enemy, you meet with the Lord in prayer. Nehemiah doesn't even bother responding to their insults. He turns it over to the Lord. Look at Nehemiah 4 and verse 4. He just says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Verse 5, And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. And then look at verse 9. He says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So you see, he doesn't even bother saying anything back. He just turns it over to the Lord. So meet with God in prayer because Michael's way works. Just as Michael the archangel didn't bring a railing accusation against the devil, he just said, the Lord rebuked thee in Jude verse 9. And Nehemiah lets the Lord fight his battles. Moses said, the Lord shall fight for you. In Exodus 14, 14, the Lord said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And Nehemiah says himself, in Nehemiah 6, 3, I'm doing a great work. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Why should you stop, stop doing your work for the Lord to come down and say something to these people that's just mocking you and you're not going to change their mind? That's why I don't comment on comments usually that are against me making fun of me mocking me why should i stop what i'm doing to take time to say something to somebody that's not going to pay attention to what i'm saying anyway so michael's way works just say the lord rebuked thee and since they make light of you make light of their insults we don't have to respond to our critics you see, the modern way is to make response videos to all the preachers and Christians out there criticizing you. But the hateful preachers love the publicity. You're just helping them out. They love the attention. So you're helping their cause by doing that. Just make light of their insults. Act like it's not even that big of a deal because it's really not. In Ecclesiastes 7.21, it says, Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. See that? Don't take much heed to all the words that are spoken. And if you do hear it, just say, well, I've said something bad about somebody else I shouldn't have. And give them the same mercy that you would want in that situation. Just overlook it. Make light of their insults. Just like they make light of the saints, make light of their insults. And Nehemiah prays to the Lord to turn their reproach upon their own head. He says, to cover not their iniquity. You know, he's praying hard against them. You know, Paul says to bless them which persecute you in Romans twelve fourteen. But on rare occasion, even in the New Testament, you might have to appeal to the Lord to re reward an evil worker according to their works. Like in 2 Timothy 4.14, over in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 14, he says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. You know, go to God in prayer. Meet with God in prayer over it. 
Now the next thing, put your mind to the work. Nehemiah didn't let these insults keep him from working. They all had a mind to work. Look at Nehemiah 4, 6. In Nehemiah 4, in verse 6, it says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together into the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. So put your mind to it. Put your mind to the work. Just put your mind on that. Don't, don't think about the enemy. Don't think about the things getting in the way. Just keep working. Because the mission is possible. The enemy will do everything in his power to keep you from finishing the task. He wants you to think it can't be done, that you don't have what it takes, that you don't have the time and the material and the resources. But with God, the mission is possible. Matthew 19, 26. All things are possible with God. You, you, rem you just remember, you are not strong in yourself, but you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 10. You know, a lot of the athletes, I remember they were putting, I can do all, the, the verse, Philippians 4.13, on their shoe. They were putting, I can do all things on their shoe. But they left out the most important part. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know, you can, anything God wants you to do, you can do it. Because you can do it, all things through Christ, which strengthens you. The mission is possible. So put your mind to the work. Don't think that you can't do it because the Lord can do it through you. And maintain good works. Nehemiah and the people had the wall built all the way around and halfway up. They weren't letting the Sanballat and Tobiah hold them back. They were against them from the beginning. But they put their mind to the work and they maintained good works. Nehemiah and the people... Weren't afraid of Sanballat and Tobiah as much as some Christians would be today. Sanballat and Tobiah were even more angry when they found out that the wall had this much progress. And the world hates Christians because they believe the mission is possible and they pursue it. They believe the impossible and pursue it. Maybe they don't, maybe they didn't make an end in a day. But they maintained their work ethic. Paul says to maintain good works in Titus 3.8 and 3.14. He says to press toward the mark for the prize in Philippians 3.14. He says to run with patience in Hebrews 12.1. And eventually, you'll finish your course like Paul did in 2 Timothy 4.7. You see, part of overcoming the foe is realizing that if God be for us, then who can be against us? Overcoming the foe is realizing that the mocker comes and goes. Overcoming the foe is realizing you have already overcome. So you just turn them over to the Lord until it's time for you to stomp them under your feet. Overcoming the foe is occupying till the Lord comes and outrun their mouth with your work ethic. Just outrun them. They want to sit back and crit the more they criticize the more behind they're getting on stopping you. They could be doing something to stop you instead of criticizing you. But you just keep running and you'll outrun them. 